Fritzing parts fast, drawing for schematic view. All the details that was covered in part 1 will be glossed over very quickly in this one, so if you want to know more, watch part 1 and part 2. Schematic view is easiest to draw for because it uses simple symbols for parts. Basically it's a type of shorthand to convey a circuit design. And because everything is simple symbols, it's all just simple line drawings. And if you're making a common standard component, it's not like you'll ever have to draw a schematic drawing for it because it should have already been drawn. Take capacitors for example. No matter what type of capacitor it is, nor what footprint it has, the schematic drawing is going to be the same. Basically for common components just be right click and edit. Changing the breadboard drawing and the PCB drawing and just leaving the schematic as is. Then when you look at modern parts they're just multi-pin modules and that means what you'll mainly be drawing is large rectangles with lots of pins. We can see this part is non-conventional and should be fixed and that's a problem with other people's homemade parts when they don't research what's required. There is part checking software now but it doesn't get used often so treat every part as unchecked. We'll now draw the schematic for this part, but I'll use different pin styles so I can show you the effects they have. We set up Inkscape the same as we did in part 1, but this time we select inch. Everything in Fritzing schematic is on 100 thou grid. That's pins, parts, traces, everything. If you go view, set grid size, you'll see the default is 0.1 inch or 100 thou. So next is to make 100 thou grid. Select new and change to inch. Then it's 0.1 in x and 0.1 in y. Now zoom into the top left corner. My part has 100 pins and I'm going to put 50 on each side, which is 5 inches. Then you've got to add 100 thou top and bottom, so it's 5.2 inches. I'm also going to add 100 thou between my 50 pins, so I've got two lots of 25, so that makes 5.3 inches. So we rectangle select, we go to Y0, but X 200 thou. 200 thou pins seem standard for large parts and 100 thou for small parts. We keep an eye on the Y coordinates and with the snap on, we click on this point, drag till we get to 5.3 inches. Then just pick a width that looks good. Then it's fill and stroke dialog box and it's turn off the fill. Turn on the stroke. And go for 12 thou stroke thickness. You could draw the rectangle with four pencil lines because next we're going to be using the pencil to draw the pins. We now pick the pencil or draw freehand. We click on our grid. Move over to our other grid and click on it. Pins are 10 thou so punch that in. Pins are silver so shift click a grey that looks silverish. If you want to be technically correct the graphic standards are here. Then we go Edit and Preferences. While it's on the pencil, we go Take from Selection. So from now on, all our lines will be the same. Then it's just a matter of drawing more pins. With the arrow button selected, I'll box these five pins. Then Edit, Duplicate. Then just drag it and snap it. Or while it's still selected, Control D, Duplicate. Grab and drag. I've done the 25 pins for one group, so it's Box Select and Control D, Duplicate. Then grab and snap. I miscalculated my rectangle. So it's arrow select and click on the rectangle, then just drag the bottom until it snaps. Box select the 50 pins, duplicate and drag to the other side. Next we have to resize the page, and it's a bit technical if you want to get a part to work correctly. The technical problem is that Fritzing can sometimes assign the wrong object in a part as a snap point due to an Inkscape format problem. We'll see this problem later. Method 1 is to set the page size manually. This is not the recommended Fritzing way, but it's simpler and it works. So you go File, Document Properties, we change custom page size to inches. Our part is 5.2 inches high, so we punch that in. We count the drawing as 10 grids wide, so we punch in 1 inch. Now we'll zoom in to check if it's right. Our pins are still on the grid, but we notice the page size is coming through the line strokes. When you draw a line snap to the grid, the stroke straddles the grid line. And even though it's not technically correct in Fritzing to have anything outside the page size, because it usually cuts it off, in this instance it doesn't seem to mind. I'll tell you how to bring a drawing into a Fritzing part later, but if we bring this drawing in and we grab it, you see it snaps to the grid and the pins and the pin indicator colors line up with the grid. Notice half our stroke doesn't worry Fritzing. But if your part has the red indicator colors on the grid and the pins off the grid, you've got an Inkscape transform problem and I'll tell you how to fix that later. The problem can be subtle on some parts like this is out by the stroke thickness. So keep an eye out for small discrepancies. Page resize method 2. This drawing worked fine in our other part but the official way is edit, select all, then edit and resize to selection and that puts our page size on the outside of the part. But when we make a part out of this drawing, we can see the pins are wrong. The red indicator color is on the grid, but the pin is below the grid. But if we go back to Inkscape and click on the parent group, we can see a transform translate in the top box. And to get rid of it, you hit the cross delete button. The problem now, if you're paying attention to the drawing, is it moved. I'll Control Z to undo it and it'll move back. Select the schematic group. Now look at the XY coordinates for that group. They are zero, zero. Now we'll edit and redo that delete attribute. 
And if we look at the coordinates of that group again, they've changed. And to put it back, we have to punch in our 0, 0 coordinates again. But now when we go back to our schematic group, we see a transform translate again. And you can't press the delete cross or it'll move again. We control Z to undo again. And to fix this, we make sure our group is selected. Then it's object and ungroup. Then object and group again. We click on our new group and we don't see a transform. We click on the parent group and we don't see a transform either. And this drawing works correctly in our fritzing part. Note the page border is not on the grid, yet the pin snaps to the grid. According to fritzing rules, the outside of a part should be within the grid lines, even though some of their own core parts hang over the grid. If you want to fix it to fritzing standards, this is how. If you want to get the line snap to grid drawing to comply, select the schematic group in XML edit, then it's object, ungroup. Then click on an open space in the drawing and select the rectangle. Our grid is on 100 thou hold numbers, so we make the outside of our rectangle 100 thou hold numbers, and remove 12 thou from the height and width. We have to put our origin back on the grid, so we go 0.2 inches in the X and 0 in the Y. To fix the pins, just box select, I'm just doing a couple pins as an example, and make X 0. This group we have to move 5 thou in, because there's half a stroke hanging on the outside. So we delete the 5 thou and get 0.79. But it now complies to the fritzing standard. From a pin standpoint, technically this is all you need for a drawing, with just nondescript lines or paths for the pins. But that's only if you sign the pins in fritzing. To finish the drawing to test it, while it's all selected, it's object and group. Change the group name to schematic, because that's fritzing's identifier. Go file, save as, give it a name, and go to plain SVG. Then save. Because we are making a 100 pin shield part, we are going to use a 100 pin fritzing part to bring our SVG into. So we grab an IC and select 100 pins in Inspector. We then right click edit that part. Then it's schematic, file, load image for view. Select your SVG. In our table there's no pin assign ticks. So we have to assign them using the fritzing editor. So we click a pin, select graphic and then click it on the drawing. Our pins are assigned so it's file, save as new part. I'll call it test. If we now bring our new part into the schematic view of the fritzing program, watch the pins when I do a wire connect. The wire connects to the center. And that's because we didn't set our compass connection points in the edit. In Fritzing Edit, if you look at the pin, there's a crosshair in the center, and that's the connection crosshair. We select the pin, it highlights, and we select the east end of the pin. And now the connection crosshair anchor is on the east end of this pin where we want it. Back in Fritzing, we test the connection with a wire, and now it connects to the tip. As a drawing tip, if you use your original Inkscape drawing and bring it into Fritzing again, you'll have to assign the pins all over again in Fritzing Edit because these are still unassigned paths. What you can do is go to your edited part, go in schematic, then it's file, show in folder, and use that drawing. Because the assign pin drawing out of Fritzing has all the path labels changed. So copy that, work on it, and then load that back in. In Inkscape, we can get around assigning the pins in Fritzing Edit by changing each pin's ID to the Fritzing Auto Assign format. The word connector, numbers starting from zero, and pin on the end. Remember to use the same pin number for the same pin in every drawing. If pin PA3 is pin 6 in the breadboard, it has to be pin 6 in every other drawing. But when the pins are long shaped, you have to assign the contact anchor point, and that would still be in fritzing. To get around that, people put a small invisible rectangle on the tip of the pin. It's a 10th hour rectangle, zero stroke and zero fill. And give that the fritzing auto assign ID label. And if we bring that drawing into our part, the pins do assign, and it does work. It's just that you don't see this red tip style in schematic view. You do see it in breadboard view when the part maker is lazy. But what you can do to assign pin and anchor point in the drawing stage is give the pin path the usual fritzing auto assign name but give the little invisible rectangle on the tip connector, number and terminal. This assigns the anchor point. Then when you bring the SVG into your part you don't have to do anything because the pins and compass points are already assigned and it works like it should. Back in Inkscape we've done all our connector pins and terminals. Now let's do our text. Method 1 is create a text from scratch but I'm not going to do that because it's in part 2 so go watch that. Method 2 is easy because we get our text from our breadboard drawing. We select our text group, then it's edit and copy, then it's edit and paste. We can't see our text because it's white, so we just click on a color. Text is also silver, similar to a pin. We grab it and move it. We select transform. We select to rotate and punch in minus 90. Apply. Then just grab it and place it. We have all our text. The next part isn't that important because the text isn't over our pins and blocking access to them but we move our text group to the top. Just click on it and just indent it until the writing is level with the other writing. Then just select move to the bottom. Bottom is higher in the XML table. Our four text groups are at the top. And now we have to go into each one, then delete the first instance of PX in the code for the pin. Then just repeat for a hundred pins. Warning, do the PX code fix last just before saving 
because if you move something it'll reset all the PXs and put them back and you'll have to do it all again. Lastly we add the part name in Inkscape. So select the font button, we click in an open space, type your word. We still have the old pin label font style so we need a black fill so we click on black while it's still selected. If you want to change font style or size change it now. This was covered in part 2 but you can leave the text as is like our just done copied text so it can be edited in the future just you have to move the PXs or convert it to a path and not worry about the PX but you need a full delete and rewrite to edit it. I'm choosing to convert to path method here. Then it's path and object to path. Basically it's a logo now. And if we click on our text group we get our paths. We arrow select. Then in our transform dialog box we select rotate. Punch in minus 90 degrees. Apply. Then just grab the object and put it where it looks good. Next we have to put our text group in our schematic group. So it's select. Then indent. Then just move it to the bottom which is the top in the XML table. Then it's File, Save As, Plain SVG, and then OK. Our pins are at the bottom and superfluous stuff at the top, and they're all in a schematic group. So it's the usual File, Save As, Plain SVG, and Save. Then it's the usual right-click Edit our 100 pin part. Then it's Schematic, File, Load Image for View, select your SVG, ignore the fritzing font message. Our part looks fine. We go to our pins and we can see an assign tick on all of them. If we zoom right in we can see our assign crosshair on the tip. If you hover over it you can see our assign rectangle. So it's file, save as new part. We bring our new part into a sketch. We grab it and move it and it snaps perfectly to the grid. Pins also line up with the grid. We make a connection and it attaches to the tip. Even if you start down here it snaps to the tip. And that's your drawing from scratch schematic view drawing in a sketch. And lastly is the quickest way, and that's to use the schematic drawing of an IC. Just right click edit, go to schematic, file, show in folder, copy it somewhere, open that in Inkscape, open your XML editor and open the schematic group, go to your pin text label, open that, and just type what you want in. This is editable text, not a path, so you can change it how you like. And remember, don't press enter at the end. Then it's the usual file, save as, plain SVG. Bring your new drawing into Fritzing Edit and it's file, load image for view. Select your drawing. Our text comes in OK, so we just have to save it as a new part. In our next video, we'll be making the drawing for our PCB view.